John with Digital Foundry here with a closer look at Uncharted 2 Among Thieves on PlayStation 4. Uncharted 2 is the game that demonstrated just how much of a technical powerhouse Naughty Dog really is. The PS3 original was a technical masterpiece with impressive changes made to lighting, animation, materials, and frame rate. While the original Uncharted was an excellent game in its own right, it was also a bit scruffy around the edges. Huge chunks of the original game had to be remade for the Nathan Drake collection, but with Uncharted 2 we're looking at a very different project indeed. So when approaching a remaster, we weren't entirely sure what to expect. Unlike Drake's Fortune, returning to the original PS3 version of Uncharted 2 was not at all a jarring experience. It remains a beautiful, highly playable game that continues to impress to this day. So just how does one tackle such a project? Well, firstly, we have the expected improvements. A full 1080p resolution is coupled with an excellent post-process anti-aliasing solution that manages to dodge in-surface aliasing while minimizing flicker and blur. This is then coupled with a moderate level of anisotropic filtering that appears to vary on a per-surface basis. The end result is a significant improvement to image quality all around. Then we have the frame rate. The original PS3 version delivers a fairly steady 30 frames per second with V-Sync engaged. On PS4 this is bumped up to 60 frames per second with minor dips in the more demanding sequences. Tweaks to gameplay are less significant this time around, but the higher overall frame rate and reduction in input latency help create a more responsive experience. Uncharted 2 has never looked or played better. So beyond these improvements, just what has changed in the jump to PlayStation 4? This time around the changes are a lot more subtle, but still significant nonetheless. It's clear that when approaching this project, the artists poured over every inch of the game and made changes to each asset that required a bit of extra polish. With that in mind, let's jump into the world of Uncharted 2 Among Thieves. So let's start right at the beginning, the train escape sequence. The first improvement we noticed here in this scene is actually one that has a pretty far-reaching effect on the rest of the game. Improved specular. Look at the seats throughout this scene and you'll notice that the vinyl material now sports a more realistic sheen. Drake himself remains nearly identical to his original appearance, but there are a few changes. His hair is now matted down, parts of his outfit, including his leather holster, have received new textures, while subtle changes to lighting and shading improve the overall scene a bit. Moving on to Borneo, we see Drake infiltrating an enemy encampment featuring a handful of new textures and improvements. First here, take note of the wooden beams used along the floor, which now feature higher resolution texture work and improved texture filtering. We also see the lower quality ambient occlusion from the original removed and replaced. Also note the tent in the distance which benefits from improved specular highlights. After this sequence, we're given a glimpse at just how subtle some of the improvements can be. This generator, for instance, has been completely remodeled with more geometry, improved specular highlights, and improved textures. Look at how much more curved its surface is. You might also begin to notice rather subtle changes made to lighting. Colors take on a slightly different hue on PS4 throughout the entire game. In many scenes such as this, colors take on a slightly more subdued appearance, yet in others we actually see brighter colors on PS4. These adjustments are generally only noticeable in a side-by-side -side comparison, however. While we're here, also take note of the visible rim around Nate's fingers where ambient occlusion has been added. Jumping ahead, here we have a real-time cutscene. Check out the improved barrel models in this scene. All of them have been remade with significantly more geometry giving them a more rounded appearance, while new textures and specular effects bring extra nuance to the scene. Also take note of the changes to the flashlight spots in this scene. Characters are standing in the same place in both versions, yet we see an extra spotlight on PS3. Sully's flashlight perhaps? How curious. You might remember this escape sequence from the teaser trailer released in August. The big difference here is the background geometry. Take note of the improvements made to the rock mesh behind Nate and Sully. We also see additional specular effects applied to the foliage in the foreground. How about this snowy sequence? We see the base texture has enjoyed a new specular layer that helps create an icier looking surface. 
If we pause this scene, also take note of an interesting change to the motion blur implementation. On PS4, the intersection between the character's silhouette and the background exhibits a minor artifact not present on PS3. A side effect of translating from SPU code to a GPU effect, perhaps? Snow trails appear to be lit differently as well. While we're on the subject of motion blur, we did note a strange anomaly in a number of sequences. Take this pre-rendered scene for instance. On PS3 this scene utilizes motion blur on background elements to accentuate the movement of the Jeep. On PS4 the effect is missing. This applies to every scene which made use of motion blur in a pre-rendered sequence. That said, this scene does sport a number of other key improvements. The Jeep itself has been remodeled with more geometry, textures have been improved, and the interior has been fleshed out. Note the addition of an instrument panel here, albeit one with incorrect values on the gauges. Self shadows have also been improved. Look along the windshield here. As Nate picks himself up moments later, the jump in texture quality becomes immediately evident. Both the texture itself and the filtering create an enhanced sense of depth on PS4. No matter which version you play though, this scene is still impressive to this day. A great demonstration of Naughty Dog giving control to the player in what would otherwise be a static cutscene. As we come to the end of this sequence, take a look at the texture on the wall here. The difference in quality is pretty significant. Moments later, as soldiers come pouring out of this alley, we see increased geometry in some very subtle places. The stones along the ground here have more depth, while this pillar to the left has a few small chunks removed. Talk about attention to detail. Let's not forget the museum infiltration from earlier in the game. Once again we see a host of minor texture enhancements that improve the overall presentation. In scaling this wall, we see improved texture resolution and higher quality specular effects, along with improved shadow projection. Shimmying around this ledge then, take note of the more rounded dome here. Once again, extra geometry has been added to the mix. The degree to which these changes have been applied is really quite surprising at times, actually. Take this sequence. We see the inside of a Turkish prison just this one time, yet, if you look at the arch behind Sully right here, you can see that these arches were actually smoothed out for the PS4 version. They're out of focus and only appear in this single scene, yet the artist actually went back and improved them. Very impressive. Also take note of Sully himself. He looks a bit, well, older here. More defined wrinkles are certainly evident, though the lighting has been modified in this scene helping to accentuate the subsurface scattering which is used only in these offline sequences. Now it's time to look at one of the most impressive scenes from the last generation, the train sequence. Here Drake climbs on and around train cars as it speeds through a number of lush environments. The implementation of moving scenery here is nothing short of brilliant, with completely smooth transitions between scene changes that give the impression of moving through an actual place. Motion blur is one of the most important effects in this sequence. By applying a blur pass to the surroundings, the effect of motion is accentuated greatly. Unlike the pre-rendered sequences lacking this effect, it is present and accounted for here on PS4. As we climb on top of the train, take note of improvements made to the models and textures. In fact, much of the train has been enhanced with more detail throughout. While replaying this sequence, we actually encountered a rather strange bug on PS3. Take a look. We have to wonder if this is actually possible in the PS4 version as well. One of the most interesting changes here we notice deals with the way shadows are rendered on this train. On PS3 the shadows are of certainly lower resolution, but appear to have some sort of velocity map applied to them. They are smeared in such a way to more closely match the blur effect applied to the scenery. On PS4, shadows are rendered differently. The resolution is higher, but they lack this extra detail. Not really a critique, just an observation here. Uh, here's yet another impressive detail we noticed. If you look closely, you'll actually see a green tint on the train car while passing through patches of bamboo. This feels like an attempt to mimic light bounce. This is actually present in both versions, but far more evident on PS3. The material used on the train car has been modified and appears more detailed on PS4, but that change may have impacted this effect. 
A bit later, during this tunnel section, we're given another close look at changes made to the train cars. Notice the more detailed window arches, for instance. And then here's a nice shot showing improved normal maps on PS4. The wood appears much more detailed and three-dimensional in this shot. Then we have one of the most beautiful shots in the entire game. Here, as the camera slowly reveals Drake's plight, we get a beautiful look at the snowy cliffside. At a glance, they look nearly identical. But if you look right here, on PS4, you'll see that The Rock has actually seen some added geometry. With such an attention to detail, we could continue to point out small details for another hour or so, but we think this represents a nice cross-section of what you can expect from this remaster. As you've seen by now, it doesn't quite offer the same leap over its PS3 incarnation as we saw with Drake's Fortune, yet it's clear that a ton of work has been poured into this project all the same. In the end, we still have a better looking, better playing version of Uncharted 2. Even six years after its release, the game remains as enjoyable as ever. If you've never played it, there is no better time to jump in, but even for veterans of the series, it is certainly worth revisiting. Well, that about wraps it up here. Be sure to check out the full article, and if you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe to our channel. Until next time, this is John, signing off.